Hello, welcome to the first session of C++ Advanced. Today we're going to talk about four functions that could be generated by the compiler if you don't declare them by yourself. The copy constructor, copy assignment operator, destructor, default constructor. There's an additional rule about the default constructor, which is it will, gen it will be generated only if there's no constructor declared at all. Suppose I write a class dog with empty definition. The class dog is equivalent to a class like this. The compiler will fill in the four functions for me since I don't have them defined. Copy constructor copy assignment operator, the default constructor, and the destructor. Now you, you may imagine that uh, the compiler generated functions are empty functions that doing nothing. For this particular case they are doing nothing because the dog class is so trivial but for any real world class um, there, there will not be empty. They'll do their jobs. The copy constructor um, will do a member by member initialization. It will use the members from right hand side dog to initialize every member of its uh, of uh, this dog. The copy assignment operator will do a member by member copy. It will copy the members from right hand side dog to this dog. The um, default constructor will call base classes default constructor and the data members default constructor. And the, the, the destructor is doing the opposite. It will call the base classes destructor and the data members destructor. These are the things that the compiler generated function will do. Now you may want to ask the question, what if the compiler generated function uh, is unable to do the job they are supposed to do? For example, the copy assignment operator will do a member by member copying. What if one of the members is a const or a reference? Remember the constant reference, they cannot be copied, they can only be initialized. Then what the, does the compiler do? The compiler will simply do not generate this function. Uh, similarly for um, docs default constructor, um, it will call the base class's default constructor. What, what if the base class doesn't have a default constructor? Then again, this function will be not be generated. For destructor, well, every class have a destructor so it should have no problem call the base class's destructor and the data members destructor, right? Well, not exactly. What if the base class's destructor is not public? It's a private destructor. Then again, this destructor cannot be generated. So the compiler generated functions sometimes are really handy to use but uh, you need to keep these things in mind if you are relying on the compiler to generate this function for you. Some other notes, all the compiler generated functions are public and inline. They are generated only if they are needed. That means if they are not used at all in the function, in other functions, then they will not be generated, even if the compiler is capable of generating them. Now let's look at a less trivial class, dog. Uh, the dog has a, a name, which is the name of the dog. It is a string. And the dog's constructor takes a name as a parameter, and the default name is Bob. And the dog has a destructor. In the main function, I create a doc1 with the name Henry, and then I create doc2, and then assign doc1 to doc2. The output of this simple program is Henry is born, Bob is born, Henry is destroyed, 
Henry is destroyed. The reason Henry is destroyed twice is because Doc 2 was created as Bob and destroyed as Henry because Doc 1 is assigned to Doc 2. Now let's examine what functions are generated by a compiler in this particular example. Is the copy constructed generated by a compiler? No, because the copy constructor is not used in our main function, so it will not be generated. Is the copy assignment operator generated by the compiler? We used copy assignment operator over here, and our doc does not have a copy assignment operator defined. So the the compiler will gladly generate that function for us. The answer is yes. Destructor. Destructor is always be used, but the dog already have a destructor defined. So the answer is no. The compiler no need to generate one. The default constructor. The default constructor is used over here and the doc already defined a default constructor over here. Now many people have the concept that a default constructor is a constructor that has no parameter. That is a wrong concept. A default constructor is a constructor that can work without any, without any parameter. So this is our default constructor. So the answer is no, because we already have a destruct default constructor. Now suppose I change the M name member from a string to a reference to a string. Now what will happen to this code? This code will no longer compile, because here we are using a copy assignment operator that's generated by compiler and the compiler generated copy assignment operator does a member by member copy. Since the dog has a member which is a reference, this member cannot be copied. So the compiler will not generate this operator for us. This code will not compile. So another thing about this example is this kind of class cannot be used by uh, with the stand library container because stand library container re requires the the containee to be copy assignable and copy constructible. So this is our troublemaker. Now let's look at our second example. We have a new class caller, and the dog has the uh, data member m caller, which is of type caller, and in the main function, I create a dog dog one. What do you think the output of this program is? You may pause the video and think about it. This code will not compile. It give a compile error that says no matching function for call to dog dog. How did this happen? Where did this error message come from? When I create doc1, I'm calling the doc's default constructor for doc1. And since my doc doesn't have a default constructor, the compiler will try to create a default constructor for me. And we know that the compiler generated a default constructor will call the data member's de default constructor. In this case, we'll call mcaller's default constructor. However, the caller doesn't have a default constructor either. So the compiler will try to generate the default constructor for caller first. Since caller already have a constructor that takes a string parameter, the compiler is not able to generate a default constructor for color. As a result, the compiler is not able to generate a default constructor for dog either. That is why we got this message no matching function call to dog's default constructor. 
and the candidates are the dog's copy constructor. We know that copy constructor is dog's the second com constructor that compiler generates. So if uh, if we remove the parameter from for color's constructor, then this code will compile and the output will be color is born. Now let's add a second data member for dog. It's a reference to string. If you remember from previous example that a string data member, uh, a reference data member in the class will prevent the compiler from generating copy assignment operator for the class. Since in, in this example we are only using the default constructor, so we should be fine, right? Not exactly. Compiler generated a default constructor will call the default constructor for the data member of data members of the dog. That is good. However, what the default constructor doesn't do is to initialize the data members for the dog. So in this case, M name is constructed but not initialized. And we know that C++ standard requires that all reference need to be initialized because reference cannot be reassigned. So the only way to assign a variable to a reference is through initialization. Because mname is not initialized, so this code will not compile. Finally, there's an update in C++ 11. Um, in C++11, there's a new way to define uh, the default constructor. It is done by this. This gives me a way to use the compiler-generated default constructor even though I have defined other constructors already. So this should be a very handy feature. That's all for today's class. Thank you for watching and you're welcome to give me any feedbacks and comments so that I can improve my class. Bye bye.